Now, I hope that Robert Jenrick, the Immigration Minister and the Tory MP for Newark, can hear me. Robert, thank you very much for joining me this morning. Now, um, I know you've been writing about this Good in morning, the Telegraph, Pamela. but do migrants have a right to complain about the conditions that they're housed in in hotels when they're seeking asylum here? Well, Camilla, I'll always try to treat uh, economic migrants and asylum seekers with dignity and decency, but I'll never put the interests of migrants above those of the British public. And in this case, the Home Office offered perfectly good accommodation to asylum seekers in central London, and some, for a short time, said that it didn't meet their requirements. But I'm pleased to see that common sense prevailed, and uh, most, if not all of them, ended up using the accommodation. We've got to stop using hotels altogether, reduce our reliance on them. The only sustainable way to do that is to stop the boats in the first place and secure mm. our borders. But for as long as we are using them, we've got to get value for money for the taxpayer. But they're complaining about two metres not being enough space for four migrants. I mean, they may have a point there. Would you like to overnight in a two metre squared space? Well, we'll always meet legal obligations and there are space standards in hotels and other forms of accommodation. But we have to get value for money for the taxpayer. It is wrong that we're spending £6 million a day on hotels. And mm. so it's right that we make sure that those uh, hotels that we do use, and I say we want to reduce our reliance on them uh, as rapidly as we can, but whilst we are using them, we get good value for money for the taxpayer. And remember, these are migrants who have said they are destitute. They've said that they have absolutely nowhere to stay, no friends, no family, no money, and the taxpayer is stepping up and providing them with good quality accommodation and board and lodgings. And so, you know, those, I think those migrants are wrong to protest and say that they deserve to have single uh, bedrooms with ensuite bathrooms and so on. And I'm pleased to see that common sense seems to have prevailed in this case. The idea of all of these migrants flooding into hotels across the UK is the government's fault, really, isn't it? I mean, there's an astonishing figure today suggesting that you're still to process the asylum claims of 17,000 Albanians. What on earth were they doing coming to this country claiming asylum in the first place when they're coming from a safe country? The whole reason why this has happened as far as GB viewers and listeners are concerned is because the government has completely lost a grip on this issue. No, that, that's not a fair analysis. There's a European migration challenge. There are millions of people on the move around the world and all European countries are facing very large numbers of illegal migrants. I've just been in France, in Italy, and then in North Africa, in countries like Tunisia uh, and Algeria, and the challenge is very great. But that is why we need to take the kind of robust action that we are. And we have put in place, in the last six months, under Rishi Sunak, Suela Braverman and myself, one of the most comprehensive and robust plans of any major European country. We've signed two important agreements with France. There's going to mean more interceptions on the beaches. About 33,000 illegal migrants have been stopped on beaches in France in the last year alone, a 40% increase on the year before. We've now got a gold standard uh, returns agreement with Albania. That means Minister. there are weekly flights sending people back to Albania. Minister, when will you deport somebody to Rwanda? I mean, you say that you've got this gold standard. That's not how it feels from the voters' point of view. They feel that there's a lack of control of our borders. They're worried about the legal migration figure of 606,000 when David Cameron put a cap on numbers at 100,000. So it's not a gold standard. It's great that you've been jet-setting around to see and share best practice. But when are we going to see migrants deported to Rwanda? Can you give us a date? Well... Well, we'll get those uh, flights going to Rwanda as soon as we get through the courts. When will that and be? And we're getting the bill through Parliament. Well, I can't give you a date because we don't know uh, when we'll hear from the courts, but I'm very pleased that the uh, High Court resoundedly supported the government's policy, said it was legal. All of those people who said it wasn't were proven wrong. The Court of Appeal have heard our case. We're waiting for their judgment. Uh, we will get those flights in the air as soon as we possibly can. And the bill that I'm piloting through Parliament fundamentally changes the system because you can't just tinker with this system. It is uh, today, there is flagrant abuse of the system. We need an entirely different one. Can, and the system that we're building is one where if you come illegally, you will not be allowed to stay here.
can you put some figures on it then? There were 45,000 people coming in illegally across the channel last year. What number should that be reduced to? And on this 606,000 legal immigrants, what should that number be capped at? Well, on illegal migration and the boats, we've been as clear as possible. We said we want to stop the boats. We want to stop people making these crossings. So will and that that's figure why be zero next year? We're taking action on every possible front. Well, I want to stop the boats. I mean, that is what I'm working day and night on with the Prime Minister and the Home Secretary. We want to stop people making these dangerous and unnecessary crossings. And that's why we're taking action diplomatically with the new bill that's going through Parliament. That's why we're boosting funding for the police. That's why I was in mm. North Africa this week. So we're getting the National Crime Agency to be smashing the gangs before people any, get anywhere near the UK. And, and on legal migration, it is far too high. And I want to see it come down. What it, illegal migration on this scale is unsustainable. Well, we've said very clearly that we want to see it fall. I want to see it fall substantially because it's putting pressure on housing, on public services, on integration mm. and businesses. Although, of course, we need to show flexibility, need to be helping British workers to get into the workplace, to help people to train and get the skills they need rather than reaching for the easy lever of foreign labour. So are That's you happy what the to have a cap? committed to doing. Are you happy to have a cap and what should it be? Um, I, well, I don't think that arbitrary caps and targets are particularly helpful. What Why I not? do think is important is that now that we have... Well, because migration is constantly changing, we need the flexibility to respond to changes in the economy or in patterns of behaviour. But the good news is that we've now got control of our borders after leaving the European Union. We've created the points-based system. And unlike all of those previous governments who made promises that they couldn't keep because of free movement, we have the ability now to make changes. And so two weeks ago, we made one of those changes, which is to say that if you are a university student coming here from overseas on a short course, you won't be able to bring dependents with yeah. you. And that will reduce substantially the number of people coming into this country. And that's just one tangible example of us using the powers that we now have, that we didn't have when we were members of the European Union, to yeah. control our migration system. And if we Should need we to think we'll do. Should we leave the ECHR? One of our people's panellists, Justin, wants me to ask you that question. Well, the bill that we're piling thing through Parliament is compatible with our international law obligations, so I hope that we'll be able to get those flights off to Rwanda and address this issue within the current framework. But look, we've said that we'll do what's necessary to stop the boats because the public want us to secure our borders and the international frameworks that were created after the Second World War mm. are now out of date and need to be renewed and reimagined for an age of mass migration. That's mm. what the UK is doing. We are a leader in this field. We've created our Rwanda policy and other governments, including in Europe, are looking to it with interest and seeing mm. that the UK is taking very robust action to tackle this problem.